While growing up, I often had opportunities to stay home alone. When I was younger, since my mother and father were forced to travel because their parents were ill and lived overseas, and I much older siblings wouldn't get off work until at least an hour or two after I finished school. I was used to being home alone and actually enjoyed it. One Saturday when I was 12, my parents had to go to a funeral for an old friend in the next city. My brother had already moved out by then, and my sister was nowhere to be found, so my parents decided to leave me home alone for the entire day. I was so excited being home alone for a whole day, man. I could blast music and spend as much time as I wanted on the computer. When my brother moved out, we converted his bedroom, the last one at the end of the hallway, into an office and my computer was in there. We still had dial-up internet at the time, so my parents added an extra phone line in the house, so I would stop taking up their line. I ran into the office to use what I called my personal phone line to call my friend who lived a few streets over to see if she wanted to come hang out. She was really upset. She told me she was having boyfriend problems and needed someone to talk to so she'd be right over. I thought to myself, girl talk means we need a good treat and ran out of the office so that I could go check out what was in the kitchen. That's when I saw her a pale woman dress all in black with a black bun on her head. Her head tilted as I ran by the corner. I couldn't really see her eyes, but for some reason, I remember thinking that she was smiling. I got some serious chills and felt instantly frozen. But I ignored it, thinking I was paranoid from being alone all day, and ran down the stair I couldn't believe. My imagination was playing tricks on itself, like that I called my friend to see if she had left yet. And since no one answered the phone at her house, I figured she had something still didn't feel right. So I put on my jacket and headed up to the driveway to wait for her. When she arrived, she asked me what I was doing outside. I said something weird just happened, but I'll tell you over white hot chocolate. And we went inside, took off our coats, and drank our hot chocolate in the kitchen. While she told me about the problem she was having with her boyfriend. Since both her boyfriend and I had webcams, and we knew he had friends over, we went into my computer room upstairs to call him and see if him and his friends wanted to web chat with us while she was on the phone with him. I was talking to his friend on the computer and setting up my webcam. While my friend was on the phone, she turned around and looked out the door into the hallway. She told her boyfriend that she'd have to call him back. She looked at me wide-eyed and white-faced and said, There's a woman in your hallway wearing a black dress. I got up from my computer chair and closed the door without looking into the hallway. I frantically tried to remember if I had told her why I was outside when she got there. I then asked her, didn't I mention that when you got here? And she said no and I said, how was her hair? And my friend said, in a bun. We both freaked out, opened the door make sure the coast was clear and bolted down the stairs. I called my parents and told them I was going to my friend's house, but they told me they were a few minutes away and insisted that I wasn't leaving the house. When they got home, I told them what happened. They didn't believe me. For the next few days, I kept thinking I was seeing her, but I wasn't sure if it was my imagination because I was scared or because she was really there. Weird things happen to like. The calendar in my bedroom would be upside down when got I got home from school, or things would go missing from my room. Eventually, these weird occurrences stopped. But a couple of months later, we adopted a two-year-old cat. From the moment she was brought home, all the way up to today, she has three or four random corners of the house that she meows at constantly and every once in a while after meowing at a particular spot she shrieks and runs away as fast as she can
One of these spots is in my bedroom. And lately she's been meowing at it every night. In grade 9, my best friend and we're I were having a sleepover at my house. My parents and younger brother were visiting family, so we were home alone after it was dark outside. We started watching a movie. We were laying on separate couches, watching the TV that was situated next to a door frame that leads to the kitchen, bedrooms, and basement in a matter of seconds. I see a feminine figure standing in the doorway, facing me, and for some reason I instinctively said, don't leave me. My friend laying on the other couch also saw the figure and said to me, don't worry, he'll go away in a second. Thinking it was my younger brother, the figure just faded away, kind of like missed into the other room. We looked at each other and realized what had just happened, then quickly turned on all the lights and sat on the same couch. We're 28 now. Still have absolutely no idea who or what that was. Or why I said that, but I still think about it often. Not home alone, but upstairs alone. I saw a doppelganger of my mom a few years back, and I think she heard mine. I was sitting in my bed and looked up when I heard her coming up the stairs. She walked by my door, looking straight at me with no expression, and walked into her room and closed the door. I'd said hi she walked, but figured whatever she didn't hear me, or maybe she was getting something from her room. Then about five seconds later, she yells up the stairs from downstairs and says, Did you call me? And I am not ashamed to say I freaked the F out. She came upstairs, looked down the hall and said, Did you close my door I didn't? And neither did she, she never closed that door. Because one of our cats primarily lived in her bedroom, and so she always kept the door open so the cat could come and go as she pleased. And it wasn't just closed as if the wind had shut it. It was fully closed and the windows were shut. Ma said she had very clearly heard me yell, Hey mom, come here from upstairs, I had done no such thing. I'm never entirely sure what I believe and what I don't, but I was totally sober not tired. And it wasn't some movement out of the corner of the eye thing. One night I wasn't feeling very well, and the upstairs had a larger bathroom. Downstairs was an old half bath, and I wanted to leave that for her if my wife needed to use it at night. So I figured I might as well sleep in the guest room. My wife did not have a problem with this, as she had work early the next day, and I was constantly getting out of bed with food poisoning at some point in the night. I woke to the door slowly creak open, and a female voice asking if I was feeling all right. I assumed it was my wife and replied, yes, honey, I'm fine, see you in the morning. But the door never closed and no footsteps went down the stairs as I would heard them in this 1800s home. Original wood floors and stairs. We were alone in the house at night. Edit. I asked my wife about it the next morning and she said, never came up to check on me let alone wake up during the night. I was facing away from the door when it happened, and the unexpected silence following the question made me turn over to check. The door was wide open. No lights were on and no footsteps. Back in high school, I'd usually be up all hours of the night playing games. I had a large dog at the time that would sleep in my room at night. It was 2 a.m. And I was finally headed to bed, but my dog wasn't with me, so I ventured out to find him. I made my way across the house to the kitchen, or dining room combo I'm standing in. The only door frame that leads to that side of 
the house we had an island in the kitchen, with a stool that the junk mail was usually kept on. So I walk up, call for my dog, and see him walk from behind the island. Behind the dining room table sat, knocking all the junk mail down as he did, so I huff and flip on the light. No dog I freak out. Scramble back across the house and end up finding him in my parents' room. I regaled the story the next day to my parents and younger sister, who often claimed to see stuff in the house. My sister pipes up and goes, Well, that's the tall black thing. Yeah, sometimes it likes to crawl around on all fours. Dig nope. Just heads up, it will be a long one, and the whole story might be a bit hectic, cause it still terrifies me till this day to think even about. But after binge reading multiple similar stories here, I decided to share as well. So the whole thing happened back in summer 2016. For some context, my parents go on holidays quite often, and I used to stay home alone for two weeks at the time to look after our dogs and take care of the garden in general. I've always been a bit of a scaredy cat due to my experiences with being harassed and followed. Home alone couple of time. My neighborhood was relatively new at the time, so the whole thing was surrounded by forests. And oftentimes you could come across some junkies lurking in the forest while walking home from shops. However, despite that, I usually felt very safe in my house, staying with four big dogs and all. Nothing would ever really happen, since most of my neighbors were my dad's friends, who were all in the army for some reason. It gives this odd sense of safety, cause who would be stupid enough to try and break in the area like that. Hardly enough during that particular summer. Couple of break-ins happened on my street, but my parents still decided to leave me home alone, reassuring me I have nothing to worry cause I have my dogs and our house is surrounded by a big fence. My fence has little spikes on top, so it's almost impossible to jump across it without hurting yourself. So first couple of days were fine. Nothing weird happened, except some thuds I heard in my garden, but thought nothing of it, since usually it was just Martin's causing some mischief in my mom's flowers. It would happen so often that even my dogs would ignore it at that point. Today's pass and I finally have to leave for shops, but do loads of stuff to do throughout the day. I had to go in the evening when I was getting slightly dark outside. Very smart of me, I know. So I went shops, got my stuff, and would walk back home through my usual path. People would usually walk their dogs there, so it was quite busy in the evening, cause it was something in between a park and a forest. So I was just casually walking, minding my own business texting someone on my phone, when I noticed that some guy pass, suddenly stood up from the bench and started walking behind me, but again thought, maybe it's someone from my neighborhood that I don't recognize, and he's just walking in the same direction as me. So I exit the forest into a normal road. Where houses start, I live right at the end of it. Guy still walking behind me. I still thinks maybe he lives in one of these houses, but nope. I get to the last junction where my house is. Guy is still behind me. And at this point, I know he's not of my neighbors. So my blood runs cold, luckily. My neighbor, who lives to the left of my house, was outside watering his plants, spotted me as I was walking by, and started talking to me. He knew my parents are out of town, and was clearly concerned why I look so stressed. So the guy who was walking behind me, immediately noticed it, and just started running away again towards the forest, which ultimately gave me creeps. He was clearly following me to my house. I called my parents to tell them that it happened, 
But again, they told me I have nothing to worry about. Our neighborhood is safe. I was my dogs with me. And so on, and so and so. I try to calm down and go on with my things as usual. So, for some more context, whenever my parents are out of town, I sleep in their bedroom downstairs since I don't want my dogs to walk the stairs in the dark and possibly hurting themselves. That night, as usual, I was laying in bed reading a book. My dogs already soundly sleeping in bed with me. I suppose they could since I was distressed because they usually sleep on the floor around the bed. I heard a thud coming from outside. Why? A little thud on the window in the room next to mine. Again thought it's just Martin's. But this one time, my dog started growling at the window in my bedroom. Couple seconds of silence, another thud this time on window in my bedroom. That already made me panic. But I tried to stay calm nonetheless. However, the third got louder, each coming from windows on the ground floor. Someone was banging on every window of my house, making my dogs go absolute apeshit, running around the house, wherever the bangs were coming from. At that point, I was in tears knowing exactly what's happening. So I got out of my bedroom and walked to the cinder of my house. The house has an open plan. So all rooms where I can see the main door. And here's the thing. My main door has a window in it so you can see inside. So I sat down in the darkness, couple feet away from the door, waiting what's going to happen. Hoping and praying that someone will get scared of my dogs barking. But no one that's lucky. First I see my dogs rushing to the door, barking at it before there is anything there. But then I see a black silhouette outside my main door, peeking inside and then banging on the little window. As I'm sitting there helpless, I moved out of sight hiding under my table, got my phone out as I'm still hearing that man trying to break the glass. I called my dad barely being able to breathe, didn't pick up for me. Right it was like 2 a.m. and they were on holidays. I tried to times more until my mom picked up. Very confused why I'm calling in the middle of the night. I managed to spit out someone is trying to break in. I don't know what to do. At that point the man was trying to open the door, banging with his whole body on the frame. To the point where my mom could hear it on the call. My dad was frantically trying to call everyone who could come and help me. His brother, my neighbors, my grandma. Everyone was put in a full mobility at that very moment to come here as fast as they could. My neighbors, the same one who spoke to me earlier that day, was the first one to come outside and scare the guy away he rushed to my back garden. But I was still too afraid to open the main door. Despite the fact, I could see the neighbor standing in front of it. I knew that man was still on my property, but back of the garden was pitch black. And my neighbor didn't want to risk going there on his own and getting potentially knocked out with something heavy. Ten minutes later, my uncle, aunt and grandma pull up to my house. And I can see them all outside. My uncle had a key so he opened the door letting my dogs outside so they could chase after the intruder. My dogs are hunting dogs, so they're not cute little puppies for strangers. My uncle and neighbor went in the backyard with torches, accompanied by my dogs to check every corner to and make sure it's safe. Now I will never forget how my grandma and my aunt approached me when I was clinging onto the chair, absolutely in tears as my mom was trying to figure out what's happening on the call. The man escaped through the back of the garden, into my other neighbor's garden. I'm guessing trying to get away from my dogs, but he was finally gone. He did manage to damage the little window. In my main door, the glass was already slightly cracked. Door itself got loose on the door hinges. I don't want to think about what could have happened if they didn't get to my house that quickly.
This happened yesterday. I was home and alone. My husband had gone to work. I just taken a shower and decided to work on a project. I did not get dressed. I was working while nude anyhow. I'm quietly working on the project. When I hear what it sounds like, when my husband gets home from work, it sounded like a door open. Someone walked in and opened and closed the fridge. I thought it was odd because he would not usually come home from work at that time of day. So I called out to what I thought was him, and no answer. I called again, nothing. I started panicking and ran from the project room to my bedroom. Put my robe on, grabbed the nine meters with laser, and yelled down the hallway toward the living and kitchen areas that I had a gun and was pointing the laser where it could be seen by the possible intruder. Nothing happened, so I crept closer and closer. And when I got to those rooms, nobody was there. I have very good hearing. I know what I heard. I thought maybe something in the house had fallen. Like the pile of laundry on the washing machine, or something in one of the bathrooms. But no, everything was in its place. I have been racking my brain, trying to figure out what the hell happened. It was very unsettling, especially since I had no clothes on. You can imagine what was going through my mind. I felt even more vulnerable. We've been in this house since 2009. The former owner's husband unexpectedly died in this house, in our bedroom, in fact. For the first few months living here, my husband and I both experienced the sensation of someone touching our feet or ankles as we slept. This happened several times. The funny thing is, we didn't tell each other about it for several weeks, so that freaked us out a little. We then did a sage cleansing, and it stopped. Not my story, but friend from college. A house her family lived in for a while when she was a kid had an attic that ran the length of the house, and the access was through a door in the back of her brother's closet at the far end. Their parents forbid them from messing around up there because it was filled with boxes from previous tenants. Landlords said, "I don't care if you look through them." But I don't know what's in there, so do so at your own risk. And, and because if someone got hurt by something falling on them, or something, it might go unheard or unnoticed until too late. To make things weirder, at the very back end of the attic, so right above her bedroom was a little locked room. Well, friends, starts getting woken up at night by the sound of someone moving around quietly. Which always turns into rapid, quiet creaking almost right above her. She figures it's her brother, because he'd have to cross over their parents' room. As well, she figured he'd get caught eventually, and just did her best to ignore the sound or think about what a teenage boy might be doing to cause it. One day during the summer, she slept in on a weekend. When she woke up, she looked outside. And saw her parents working on the big produce garden they put in. She went and got some breakfast, then went back up to her room to play with her Game Boy. For the first time after months of getting woken up, she heard the noises during the day. Curious to catch him in the act, she crept to her brother's room. The closet door was open. The attic access was open. She quietly went up the steep and narrow stairs until she could just peek in, and saw first that a path had been cleared, and then that the mattress her dad had wedged in front of the little room had been slid aside. Most surprising, however, was that the locked door at the back was ajar. Her brother stuck his head out, saw her right away, and smiled, calling her over. You gotta come see this, and then pull back inside of the dark room. She said that the only other time she'd ever felt so instantly, totally instinctually afraid, was her first time hearing a cougar scream. 
At night in the woods, she and Steli nub and flew all the way downstairs and for the yard to tattle on her brother, only to see him hauling stuff around and helping their parents. As he'd been all morning and afternoon, apparently shocked and afraid of not being believed. Even they asked why she looked so afraid. She simply answered, I think there's someone in the attic. When pressed, she said she heard footsteps and saw that the door was open when she went to look. Dad swore and went and got his gun from his truck and instructed them to wait 15 minutes if he didn't come back out. They were to all get in the truck and drive to the neighbor's place a couple miles down and call the police. No cell phones back then. He went in and after a very anxious wave, came back out pissed as hell, demanding the kids fess up who had been messing around up there. Both denied it and the family went to look as a unit, with friend reluctantly bringing up the rear. Someone had indeed pushed all the boxes and the mattress out of the way. The door was indeed unlocked and open. All that was inside no light. No window was an old rocking chair. And everything covered in decades of dust, with no sign that anyone but them had been in the room at all. No streaks, no footprints. Just some ancient mouse shit in an old chair. Brother pointed to this as proof. He couldn't have been the one, because how would he leave no signs? In the absence of other explanations, Dad didn't buy it. Brother got grounded for the next couple weeks for breaking the rules and sneaking around, and friend refused to go back to the attic. The rest of the time they lived there, sleeping on the couch in the downstairs living room, when she could get away with it, because the sound of steps in it. Rocking would still regularly wake her up. She told the story at a couple gatherings as an answer to similar scariest thing to happen to you prompts. But details left out included summary notes. Well into adulthood, years and years after they moved away, she still has recurring nightmares about the attic. It's always the same dream, but it goes one of two ways in the dream. It's like she's on a rail, and no matter how she tries to stop, go backwards, etc., she just smoothly glides along up the stairs, down the hall into her brother's room, up the attic steps, unable to close her eyes or turn away. The way usually goes is that she is frozen at the point right where she can see into the attic, and the door to the little room is open. Her brother's smiling face emerges, but she knows in her heart it's not him. The not brother grins and back hands, and the attic gets shorter and shorter. Her unable to turn or run away, until she's just within arm's reach. And just as he lunges for her, she wakes up drenched in a cold sweat and crying. The other way goes, it's the same all the way until the attic. But then when her brother's face peeks out, she knows it is him. In this version though, he's covered in thick dust, his hair, his skin, etc. except that tears have streaked his face. He calls out to her, but it makes no noise. She can't understand what he's trying to say, except for two words, help me. Then something pulls him back inside and she is frozen knowing in her gut that something terrible is happening to him. But she can't save him. This goes on until she wakes up, racked with guilt and fear. I met her brother at a barbecue and asked him about the house, in the little room apparently. He never heard her side of the story. I didn't tell him details. He swore he never went up there for fear of spiders and was pissed he was grounded, but innocent because it meant missing out on some summer stuff he and friends had planned. He always assumed it was a prank by his sister, where she panicked and lied when their dad reacted all serious and got his gun. I asked him if he remembered anything weird about the house, and he said the only thing he thought was weird was that he'd wake up knowing he dreamt 
but not remember the dreams at all. Said it was only weird because he doesn't normally have a sense of dreaming at all before or after that house. But while they were there, the feeling happened all the time. Otherwise had only good or neutral memories. From there, I never got the impression she was lying. Always spooked me hearing the story. Because assuming all details are correct, there's too many big questions. What was she hearing at night? Why was the door open to the attic? Who moved all the boxes? How did the little room unlock? When none of them had the key, if someone had gone in or come out, how were there no marks in the dust? And most importantly, if that wasn't her brother, what did she see out there? Years ago when I was 16, my dog died he got cancer around his stomach and we had to put him down. I had this dog since I was eight, so for literally half of my life I lived with him. He was a beagle or basset hound mix and was probably the chillest dog you could ever meet. Anyways, when we had to put him down, I was really sad about it and I missed him a lot in the following months. Still do my kitchen had tiled floor and our hallway had hardwood floors. So when he was alive, his nails made a very distinct sound in the floor. We also had a small bell tied to his collar for a time. So we could hear him if he was getting into stuff. Well, after he passed, when I was home alone, I continued to hear the very distinct sound of his nails on the floor and his bell jingling every now and then. At first, it really freaked me out. But after the first few times, I found it sweet that my little guy was still hanging around. It stopped after a few months, and I took that as sign my little man had moved on. Not really scary or unsettling, but it's something I can't explain. We have no other animals, and like I said, these noises are very unique. Like I said, though, it was nice hearing him around even after he was gone. I miss you, love you, Charlie. I managed to lock myself out of my house on my birthday during a tornado wall, trying to bring my cats to the basement for safety. I later found out that the tornado was approximately a couple miles or less from me at that exact time. The sky was green and it got weirdly calm. And then I could hear what sounded like a train coming. before I found an unlocked window to climb through. Well, time thanks for staying with us till the end. Hope you enjoy this episode. Do subscribe because we publish new episode every day.